1.1, the concept of instantaneous rate. Objectives. One, how is instantaneous rate different from average rate? And two, how can we estimate instantaneous rate for a given problem? Vocabulary, average rate, secant line, slope of secant line, limiting value, instantaneous rate, tangent line, slope of tangent line, and derivative. To help us understand the concept of instantaneous rate and how it differs from average rate, we'll look at a particular problem. And that problem will also help us with the second objective where we want to estimate the instantaneous rate uh, in a particular problem. So here we have a problem about John who runs 300 feet in 20 seconds. What is his average velocity? So John's average rate or velocity is equal to the distance that he traveled, which we know to be 300 feet, divided by how long it took him to travel that distance, which is given to be 20 seconds. And when you divide 300 feet by 20 seconds, you will get 15, but you also have to include units. It would be 15 feet per second. That is his average velocity. Does that mean he's always going 15 feet per second? No, because maybe when he starts, he needs to pick up his speed, so he's going a little bit slower, and it's possible that he's going faster than 15 feet per second for a portion of the 20 seconds, and slower than 15 feet per second for a portion of the 20 seconds, but on average, for those 20 seconds, he's going 15 feet per second. And that's how we understand average velocity. It's calculated over a particular time interval. In this case, the length of our time interval is 20 seconds. Now we'd like to take a look at what's described here in what you, we might call the second paragraph. And it says here, at time is equal to 10 seconds meaning 10 seconds after he starts, John is 130 feet from where he started. 10.5 seconds after his starting time, he is 140 feet from where he started. What is his average velocity for the time interval from 10 to 10.5 seconds? So let's see if we can draw a quick picture. So we know that he is 130 feet from where he started when the time is 10 seconds. So he starts here at t is equal to 0, and 10 seconds later he is at 130 feet from his starting position. 10.5 seconds from his starting position, or 10.5 seconds from when he started, he is 140 feet from his starting position. So that'd be about here. And that happens at time is equal to 10.5 seconds. So what is his average velocity for the time interval from 10 to 10.5 seconds? So in other words, between 10 to 10.5 seconds, what was his average velocity? So just like what we did for the previous problem, we'll do the same thing. We know the average velocity for John is the distance traveled by John divided by how long it took him to travel that distance. In our problem, we know he traveled a total of 140 minus 130. His final position is 140 feet from where he started, and his initial position is 130 feet from where he started. So the change in position is 10 feet. How long did it take him to travel those 10 feet? His final time is 10.5 seconds, and his initial time is 10 seconds. So it took him a half second 
to travel those 10 feet. So if you divide 10 by 0 0.5, you'll get 20 feet per second. And that would be John's average velocity on the time interval from 10 to 10.5 seconds. Now we'd like to take a look at the third paragraph here. At time t is equal to 10 seconds, John is 130 feet from where he started. And a tenth of a second later, he is 131.8 feet from where he started. What is his average velocity for the time interval from 10 to 10.1 seconds? So here's what we have. The average rate or velocity is given by the change in the distance divided by the change in the time. So to find the change in the distance, you're going to subtract uh, these two distances. At 10.1 seconds, John is 131.8 feet from where he started. At 10 seconds, John is 130 feet from where he started. So the change in distance is 1.8 feet. And the change in time is a tenth of a second because the change in time is from 10 to 10.1 seconds, so that's only one tenth of a second. So his change in distance over that time interval is 1.8 feet. The change in time is a tenth of a second. So the average rate, by definition, the average velocity is the change in distance divided by the change in time. So that's 1.8 feet divided by one-tenth of a second, and when you do that, you get 18 feet per second. Let's go back to our lesson objectives to see how far we've come and what we're trying to understand. This section is about the concept of instantaneous rate. And our objectives are to understand how instantaneous rate is different from average rate and how we can estimate instantaneous rate for a given problem. Each of these that we found for John, these are all average rates. These are all average velocities. For the first instance, we have the average velocity for John's run over a time period of 20 seconds. And here we have the average velocity for John's run over a time interval of a half second. And for the third paragraph we have the average velocity of John's run over a time period of a tenth of a second. All three of these are average velocities. However, you will notice that for the first uh, problem, it was an average velocity over a time period of 20 seconds. For the second problem, we have an average velocity over a time period of only a half second. And for the third problem, we have the average velocity over a time period of only a tenth of a second. Now here's an, an interesting question. What is an instant in time? An instant in time would be something like a snap of a finger. An instant in time. Just like that. Just one instant. There you go. That's an instant in time. Instant in time. There you go. Now, we want to understand the difference between 20 seconds, a half second, and a tenth of a second. So we just experienced three different time intervals now. The first one was 20 seconds long. The second one was about a half second long. And third one was only a tenth of a second long. Uh, which one was closest to a snap of a finger? A snap of a finger is almost instantaneous. And of these three time intervals, this one was closest to 
an instant in time. So the shorter the time interval, the closer it is to an instant in time. So we know that the average rate or velocity is the change in distance divided by the change in time. And in the problem with John, distance was measured in feet and time was measured in seconds. An instant in time has really no change in time because instantaneous mean a single instance in time. So you don't have a change in time, so it's not really possible for you to find the instantaneous rate the same way we were able to find average rates or average velocities. The problem is, and in an instant in time, there is no change in time, so you would have a denominator of zero. That's how instantaneous rate is different from average rate, because average rates are measuring the change in distance divided by the change in time for a particular change in time, whether it's 20 seconds, a half second, or a tenth of a second. But instantaneous rate is asking us what is the rate of change, uh, 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 what is the, velo for example, with John, what is the instantaneous velocity at a particular instant in time? It would be like what you see on the speedometer of a car. That tells you how fast the car is going at that instant. How is instantaneous rate different from average rate? We just talked about that. But how can we calculate instantaneous rate? Not quite the same way we calculate average rate because of the problem that we mentioned about how the change in time is going to be zero because you just have one instant in time. But we can estimate the instantaneous rate for a given problem by calculating the average rate over a very short interval of time, such as, for example, a tenth of a second. It's nearly instantaneous. It's nearly instantaneous. So you can calculate the average rate on a very short interval of time and use that as an estimate for the instantaneous rate. So in the case of John's run, if we wanted to approximate John's instantaneous velocity at time is equal to 10 seconds, this would be a pretty good approximation or estimate for John's instantaneous velocity at time is equal to 10 seconds because this is his average velocity calculated on the time interval from 10 to 10.1 seconds, which is obviously close to the time 10 seconds and it's the average velocity on a very short interval of time almost an instant in time so this is a good approximation for John's instantaneous velocity at time is equal to 10 seconds. So that is how we can estimate the instantaneous rate for a given problem. So in this lesson we want to understand the concept of instantaneous rate. We began with average rate, and when you do your homework for tonight, you will see that the average rate of change of the dependent variable with respect to the independent variable. In John's case, the dependent variable was the distance from the starting line and the independent variable was time. Uh, the average rate is actually the slope of the secant line that passes through two points on the graph of the function. In the case of John, you just have some data values, so you could plot those data values and draw a line through them, and that would be an approximation for the graph of the function, telling you uh, his position relative to the starting line at a particular time. And if you draw a line through two points and find the slope of that line, that's called the slope of the secant line. A secant line passes through two points on the graph, and that would be the equivalent of the average rate because you would have for the numerator 
the change in distance and for the denominator you would have the change in time and that is of course the formula for slope change in y over the change in x but of course we could have different variables instead of just y and x uh, if you consider shorter and shorter time intervals like we saw with John from 20 seconds to a half second to a tenth of a second the shorter the time interval the closer it is to an instant in time so the secant lines start to approach a particular slope and the limiting value of those slopes would be our instantaneous rate that would give us the slope of the tangent line and we call that the derivative of the dependent variable with respect to the independent variable so this is an introduction to vocabulary that we will continue to use but the main concept of today's lesson is what is instantaneous rate